We left off with this example problem. So this is where we can pick up next time. So let's do that. Let's let's look at this example problem. I've got uh, an auto cycle problem. This is I don't know either from a seventh or eighth edition. Probably this would be 939. I don't know what it is in the ninth edition, but you can probably find ones like this. Problems very similar to this in the 930s there. So this is an auto cycle. Um, they get the compression ratio of uh, 9.5. Right, so we know we've got an auto cycle. That means I've got an ideal air. Uh, air behaving as an ideal gas. All processes are reversible. Uh, and we're just going to add heat and remove heat instead of worrying about the combustion and exhaust process. Okay. Now again, they've given me the compression ratio. That's a very important value. That's 9.5. That is the ratio of the maximum to minimum volume. And then the problem statement will say something like uh, prior to isentropic compression is what this one says. Prior to the isentropic compression, they've given you pressure of 100 kilopascals. And so I'm just writing that down as is because we're going to have to figure out what, what do we want to call that. That's a particular state, and we need to call it something. So they've given me the pressure. It's basically atmospheric pressure, 100 kilopascals, a little above room temperature, about 35 degrees C. And they've given me a volume there of 600 cubic centimeters. I'll probably convert that to cubic meters in a little bit. But that's okay. And then they give me another state. They say after the isentropic expansion. Now, again, we don't know what state to call that yet. There are multiple states. There's four, in fact, in the auto cycle. And after the isentropic expansion, they've told me that the temperature is 800 kelvins. Excuse me. Now, this particular problem wants us to find several things. This is an example problem. Okay. Uh, we'll call this lecture 25. Lecture 24 is kind of short. We could call it a continuation of lecture 24. We'll just call it lecture 25. They want us to find several things. They want us to find the maximum temperature and the maximum pressure. They want us to find the heat in, the heat added for every cycle. And then they want us to find the thermal efficiency. This is an engine. They want us to find uh, how efficient is this engine. All right. So it's actually several things, but it's not uncommon. Sometimes these problems will ask us for multiple things. Now, this fair warning, this problem is going to get really long, and that's okay. There's a lot of algebra we can throw at this thing. Now, um, first things first, we've got to decode what the heck they've told us. What does this mean prior to isentropic compression? What do we what does that mean? Well, if you're like me, you don't really you probably don't memorize a whole lot um, unless you just have to. And and I don't have the auto cycle memorized. Let's go look at it. All right, so if we go look at it, we say, all right, well, they've told me prior to isentropic compression, these are my properties. So where is the isentropic compression occurring? Well, it's compression. That means you're going from a larger volume to a smaller volume, and that's occurring here between states one and two. That's the isentropic compression, going from a large volume to a small volume. So they're giving you what we're going to call state one. Prior to that isentropic compression, here are the properties. And then they say after the isentropic expansion, where does that occur? Well, where does expansion occur? That occurs between states three and four. And they're saying after that process has occurred, this is the temperature. Here's the property. All right. Now, Again, they've asked us to find the maximum temperature and maximum pressure. If we start there, we need to know where does that occur. Well, where does the maximum temperature occur? Well, we're not 100% sure. I mean, I think we've got a pretty good idea. But I think we can pretty well say that the maximum pressure occurs here, right? That's. I think we're looking for P3 there. 
Now, if we think about how this process goes, where do you think the temperature is going to be the highest? Is it going to be after we've rejected heat? No, no or not even after expansion, probably. Um, you're going to compress, you're going to increase the pressure and temperature a little bit through compression, but then you're going to add a whole bunch of heat at constant volume. As you add heat, you're going to increase temperature and pressure. So I think it's pretty safe to say that they're wanting to know what's the temperature and pressure at state 3. Now again, we know pressure at state 3, that's going to be max. We can see that. We think the temperature at state 3 is going to be the max because that's right after we've added all this heat to the system. Okay, so we're going to look. We, and the good news is we know T4. T4 is probably the second highest temperature. T3 is probably the highest. And the good news is, you know, I know T1, I know T4. We think T3 is the max. We're also going to be able to find, and we we'll probably will have to find T2 at some point. So we'll know all four temperatures. We'll compare and make sure that T3 is, in fact, the maximum. But that's probably a pretty safe bet. Okay, um... So let's see if we can get to those. So uh, this is what I like to do, and you don't, you wouldn't have to do this step, but I would just suggest, especially the first time you try to tackle an auto cycle problem, let's talk about the four states because there are four states here, right? One, two, three, four, and to this point, this might be the first time you've really worked a problem with this many different states that are all interrelated various ways. And let's talk about what do we know about each state, okay? What are the properties that we know about each state? Well, we know P1, T1, and V1. Those are all given. And we've already established we know T4. Okay. Now let's talk about, those are the ones that were given. Those are the easy ones. Those are the ones we have numbers for. Now let's talk about what are some other properties we know or could figure out. So are there anything, is there anything that's constant? All right, that's a common thing we would do in these types of problems or any type of thermodynamics problem. Say, okay, what, what, is there anything constant between the states? So is there anything constant between any of these particular states? And pause here if you want to take a, a crack at it. If you're ready to go, um, by definition of the auto cycle, between states 1 and 4, you've got a constant volume heat rejection. And between states 2 and 3, you've got a constant volume heat addition. So we know the volume at state 2 is equal to the volume at state 3, and the volume at state 3 is equal to the volume at state 2. And the volume at state 4 is equal to the volume at state 1. That's known. Okay. Now, I don't have a value for, I do have a value for volume 1. That's given to me. Okay. And that tells me that's the same volume at state 4. Now, I don't know, I've not been given a number for this volume at state 2 and 3, but I can find it. I can find it. Who, who can tell me, pause here and, and figure out how can I find for an auto cycle, knowing one volume, how can I find the other volume? Go ahead and pause. All right, you got it? What is this? This is the compression ratio. Remember, by definition, this is the maximum volume to the minimum volume. So, what that means is if I know, and then remember, the max volumes are V1 and V4, the min volume is V2 and V3. And the fact that I know numerically this value, and I know one of those volumes, I know all four of the volumes. So I can find, right, this is equal to, so this is V2 over, we'll say V2 over V1. Right, this is, I'm sorry, this is V1 over V2 is the compression ratio. To find V2, I need, um, this would be V1 divided by R. Okay, and, and we could go ahead and calculate that right off, but um, uh, let's go ahead and keep moving, and, and I'll probably do some calculations between videos here to try to save time. But we know, because we know V1, we can find these the min volumes just simply by dividing by that compression ratio. Okay, now there's another property that is constant between some of these states. Okay, 
there's another property that's constant between some of these states. Now, I want you to, to pause and tell me, you know, I want you to come back after you pause and tell me what, what else, what other property is constant between some of these states. Go ahead and pause. Okay. Hopefully you've pointed to this word and said that means something to me, right? What does that word mean? That means constant entropy. Constant entropy. Isentropic means constant entropy. So the entropy at state 3, we don't know, but it's equal to the entropy at state 4. And the entropy at state 4 is equal to the entropy at state 3. And the same thing between 1 and 2. We don't know the entropy at state 1 or 2. We don't have to. We don't have to know the exact entropy necessarily. We just need to know that those are isentropic because really, really powerful things happen when I've got, um, well, when the second law just says S2 is equal to S1. All right. I think, guys, those are the main things that we know right off. Um, but I, I just wanted you to see, you, it doesn't look like you know much, but you actually know a lot. If you know this compression ratio and the fact that these are isentropic processes, Yes, Izzy, we're recording. Thank you for checking on us. Go lay down. Sorry, Izzy, our cat's trying to make an appearance. Um, so again, you know properties here at these different states, right? Okay, so let's actually try to put some numbers to this. We, we want to find the temperature and pressure at state 3. I think I can move this guy aside for the moment. <clears throat> no, Izzy, you do not need to be on camera. So we need to know the temperature and pressure at state 3. Let's talk about how are we going to find that. Okay, well, yeesh. <laughs> how do we find temperature and pressure at state 3? Well, wh what are some things, what are some, what are some laws or expressions we could maybe use to get to, some, to different properties around this cycle here. Now, a lot of times people will say, um, you know, well, let's use the first law. Well, we could use the first law, and we will actually use the first law, but I think there's, there's another expression we could use here that will, um, that will allow us to relate properties to one another. What is our substance? That's a very important question. So whenever you're trying to figure out properties, that is the first question you should ask, is what is my substance? So what is our substance? It's air, right? The auto cycle deals with air. So I've got air, and one of the assumptions of the, of the auto cycle is you're going to assume that air behaves as an ideal gas. The ideal gas law, of course, says P little v is equal to RT or if you like, P big V is equal to MRT. We might use that version. Either one works. Let's use this version, okay? So um, what that means is P1 V1 is equal to MRT1, right? And what I like to do with this is I like to grab the things that are constant and put them on one side of the equation. So the volume does change between some of these states. Constant between some does change between others. So M and R are constant throughout the entire cycle. What that means then is I can say, well, P2 V2 over T2 is equal to P3 V3 over T3 and P4 V4 over T4. And between states 2 and 3, the Vs are constant. Between states 1 and 4, the Vs are constant. So that you can see very quickly now I've got four equations. I do have multiple parameters, and there's a lot of unknowns there. But that is that that's really helpful. That's a really helpful tool in, in algebra that we can, you know, uh, depending on your your course. I know for us, we don't use ideal gas law a lot in our class. But you know, if it's more chemical engineering based in, uh, thermodynamics course, you, or more of a physics based thermodynamics course, you'd probably use it a lot. All right, that's my timer. We're going to go to the next video, and, and we'll talk more about properties here.